Peace and blessings, family. Welcome back to another Through the Bible. On this Through the Bible, I'm going to do Luke 21, verses 1 through 19. And of course, you know what to do. Get your pens, your paper, paper and your Bibles. You know, take notes and just follow along. So without further ado, the Zahar, let's get into this Luke chapter 21 and verse 1. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. All right. So here is Jesus. He looked up and he saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And this is one thing that I liked about Jesus is that he watched everything that was going on. He was very attentive to his surroundings. Mm -hmm. And that's how we have to be as saints because there's things going on around us, you know, check that out over there. Look at this. Look at that. So we always be on the know what's going on, what our enemies are up to. Yeah. But what he saw was these rich men putting their gifts into the treasury, you know. And so and we, we see them putting their gifts into the treasury. Of course, you know, they in the temple. And who is this? So keep in mind, y'all, that. He was in the place where law keepers go. That's right. Okay. Verse 2. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. Okay. So now you got rich men. And now we're dealing with the poor widow casting in two mites. And so he saw this poor widow putting her two mites in. But my thing is like, now, Zohar, why is this sister still poor? But they are still rich because this shows you they didn't give her nothing. They didn't ask her if she needed anything. None of that. They could care less. Yeah, because they got her money. Mm -hmm. That's right. And others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't care about her needs. So if Jesus knew she was poor, they knew that she was poor too, but they rich and they didn't give her, ask her if she needed anything. Can I help you? Nothing. Uh, okay. Verse three. And he said, of a truth, I say unto you that this poor widow have cast in more than they all. Wow. Mm. So he said, of a truth, I say unto you that this poor widow have cast in more than they all. Because, see, they were looking at the dollar amount and all that they have, that they had, you know, um, to give and to put into the treasury. And so, but it's, because it's, in essence, it's not about, you know, how much you're putting in the treasury, but it's how much of that that you have to put in the treasury are you giving. See, because you can have 10 grand, but you ain't putting in a dollar. But yeah. a dollar, I mean, what's... Mm -hmm. But let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 11 through 14. It reads, Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. So basically he's saying like that what you have, don't be just a yell, yeah, Zohar, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give and you never give anything. So just as much as it's in you, you have that zeal and you're ready to um, give, make sure that you're performing that, that you're doing, don't let it just be lip service, but give what you have. Verse 12. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Just like this widow woman. It was about what she, um, what was in her mind to give, and not according to that, you know, what he didn't have to give. But let it be, you know, are you willing to give, you know, what you have? Because if you're giving and you don't want to give it, you might as well keep it. Right. Okay, verse 13. For I mean not that other men be eased and you be burdened. Okay, because you don't want to be um, 
make yourself, you know, put yourself in a spot to where you now you need either. So basically, essentially, you got to use wisdom in your giving too, you know. Fourteen, but by by in equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. All right. So just to put everybody on the same footing, so now you have, you know, a little bit more that you can help the saints with in providing for their needs. There may be a time also that you may be in need and they have an abundance and they're able to give you um, out of their abundance. And that's the way it should be. So, and that equality is nobody's using anybody, mm -hmm. but you're both showing love to one another. You know, because equal, if it's 12, that means I get six, you get six. If it's 14, you get seven, I get seven. And so basically, it's meeting each other's need. And just like um, the equality is you do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So the same thing that you're putting out that in that person that you're giving to them, they should put out the same thing when you need that you would um, assist them as well. So I'm basically, in essence, what he's saying, just to sum it up, just make sure you're taking care of each other because that's the right thing to do. And so this widow woman, she wouldn't have been poor if they would have been given to her. But you know, our people here, they were, they were doing everything for show and not out of love. Okay, now back to Luke 21 and verse 4. For all these have of their abundance cast into the offerings of God, but she of her penury have cast in all the living that she had. Mm. So he said all of these that have their riches, because that's who he's talking to, cast into the offering um, of God out of their abundance. Mm -hmm. But this woman... She cast in all the living that she had. And so, and this takes me, you know, reminds me back to this, because you're looking at this um, with a woman to cast in all that you have. That means you ain't going to be left with nothing. Mm -hmm. But unlike, remember that rich man that um, he said that he wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus mm -hmm. had said to him, you know, sell all that you have and give to the poor and you'll have riches in the kingdom of God. He couldn't do that. But this just shows you the that this widow woman, she really believed and she trusted in God. She put in all her living. Just matter you get a check and it's all gone. Mm -hmm. You put it in the treasury. And and if she gave all that she had, you know, where was she going to get more from? Mm -hmm. Until the next time, you know, how was she able she going to pay her bills? How was she going to, you know, get food to eat? But it shows you that she trusted God. Because mm. the rich man, when he had it all, he couldn't do it. Mm. But this widow woman, and mind you, she a widow. Ain't got no man there. No bike yeah. up. Yeah. She ain't have any of that. Mm. But let's go to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. says therefore I say unto you take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment right and I like that he said this but you know to take no thought of your life you know what I'm gonna eat what I'm gonna drink because this is this widow woman she cast all the living that she had into the treasury. But she did she take thought for her life, what I'm gonna eat, what I'm gonna drink, you know, what clothes, if I need some shoes. No, she didn't do that at all. She said he said it's not the life more than meat and the body more, more than, than rain. Mm. Okay. And I tell you that verse twenty five right there is mm -hmm. Babylon's agenda. Right? Yes. It was spelled out in it. I in mean it. This is what they keep you thinking mm -hmm. about day and night. And the right. advertisements mm -hmm. and everything. Yes. Commercials. 
mm-hmm. get you thinking about what you gonna drink, what you gonna eat, me, yes. me, me, my, what I got, my house, my car, my That's clothes. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Gotta get these this kind. Can't get that. that kind. Oh, I need uh-huh. name brand. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. So our minds have to be renewed. It sure Because a lot of our people are verse 25 right there. It sure That's right. why we can't help one another. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm. Okay. It's 26. Oh, is it? Oh, 20, oh, did I 20, put it on? Oh. oh. You know what? I think I got your paper in there. Oh. Oh, oh but I mean, it's I just I don't leave mind. it here with look. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I thought I had brought it out in my head. I thought I had it in my hand. I guess not. It's just sitting on the couch. Okay. Okay. Verse 26. Behold the fowls, behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? See? The Lord takes care of the fowls of the air. They don't do anything. Oh, when I look up, I just see them jokers soaring in the wind. Just, <laughs> I be like, look how that bird just chilling. Just, they don't clock in nowhere. Mm-mm. Sit on, then you look up, he's sitting on the electrical pole line mm-hmm. and just chirping. Mm-hmm. Just, he ain't saying, where my worms gonna come from? What insects I'm gonna get? Darn, my feathers starting to fall off. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see him got no barns built nowhere? Yep. Nope. But yet the heaven, so if the father takes care and feed us the birds of the air, then we know that we are more than birds. Yep. So he's going to take care of them. So let's go to verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And see, that's why I'm so glad you said this about this being Babylon's agenda in verse 25, because when you are focusing on the kingdom of God, which means you are in this word and you are eating it, you ain't work. You sometimes you'll be done forgot. Oh yep. man, I ain't drunk nothing, I ain't <laughs> eating nothing, because you're so focused on the kingdom of God and you know His righteousness. And then guess what? All those other things they're going to be added to you. Yeah. But that shouldn't be your your main. Um, thing is not the things and the cares of this mm. world. But that's where, like you say, Babylon wants your mind in. Mm. I remember what? King Solomon, he remember that when, when the Lord appeared to him and said, Tell mm-hmm. me tell me what you want, I'll yes. give it to mm-hmm. you. And Solomon, look at how he didn't take no thought mm-hmm. for his own life. That's right. Well, I want a Mercedes Benz, Lord. Yeah. I want a, I want one of them big, long. That's why we don't get asked, because <laughs> we already know. But where he said it's instead, go. he put his mind on mm-hmm. what kingdom, his right. people. Mm-hmm. Lord, show me how to judge so great yes. people, mm-hmm. and what happened. All the things he didn't ask for was added to him. Was added to him. That's me. right. Mm-hmm. The Lord said that was a wise answer. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. He said other kings ask for life and, and all this other stuff, but I'm going to give you all them things. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's right. And that's, that takes me back to, I think it probably was back in the 90s when that prosperity doctrine really kicked me in with these preachers and this, oh, prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. But what they should have been telling us is to seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Mm-hmm. And so now look at the state everybody yes. in the state. You know, he being evicted. Why? Because they were seeking those things of Babylon mm-hmm. and not the king. Mm. And that is where it puts you. And broken and dead and still seeking. Yes. Mm-hmm. After the clothes and the rain. It sure and is. Mm-hmm. Still doing it. Nothing's changed. All right. So let us go to um, Luke chapter 21 and verse 5. It says, and as some spake of the temple and how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said. Now, Jesus just had a spiritual moment with (laughs) y'all. And what happened? They had that carnal mind. You know, Mm -hmm. Jesus was just telling y'all about giving. He just gave you an analogy of the rich man, the rich men, and then this widow woman. And what their minds were, it was still carnal. You know, they... Look at this beautiful temple Boy, and them Israel. stones and gifts. 
if that ain't them black, these black people. Oh my goodness, be, yes. Because basically what Jesus was trying to get them understanding about is performance versus um, doing things in genuineness. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and also what Jesus was going to, he's going to show them what was going on in this temple and why verse mm -hmm. 6 was going to happen. Mm -hmm. See, you see the beauty on the outside, but God is always concerned on what's going the on inside. inside. Because remember now, we are that temple. So I don't care how fine, how beautiful, how pretty you may be on the outside, but that inside, inside. is what um, the concern is. Because remember when we go to Matthew, when you look at Matthew chapter 24, before he tells them the same scenario here, that he's telling them about the corrupt Pharisees and how they take widows' houses. He was calling them hypocrites. He was trying to show them this is what's going on in this in this yeah, temple, yeah. and this is why verse six here in Luke is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So y'all looking at the temple, but Lord was looking at what mm -hmm. was going on in the temple. And that's and and again, that's our people. Mm -hmm. You know, you're giving trying to give them understanding. Look at the temple. Look at Donald Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Look at what they're doing out there in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, right. Dang. Right. <laughs> You hear what so I just said? said? Like, did you hear? Here's this link to this YouTube video. I'm going to yeah. send it to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Um, verse 6. Yes. Mm -hmm. as, as for these things which you behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And I like that Jesus said these things that you're looking at, that you're going goo goo gaga over all this here. He said the days is going to come when there shall not be one stone left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Why? Because I, I'm showing you what's going on in this temple. And as a result, 7 AD coming on y'all. That's right. And so you just don't even worry about that. And also, where that wedding wall come from? What That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Where them stones still standing? Yeah. He said one stone upon another. I yeah. see him stones upon another over there. Yeah. Because it ain't real. Okay. So now let's go to verse 7. And they asked him saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what, sh what sign will there, there be when these things shall come to pass? Now this kind of gets me upset because you wasn't upset about this widow woman wow. and hearing about these rich men but when it came to that temple hold on now now when this gonna happen and what's gonna be the sign and when this thing when all this gonna you know come to pass but see that got their attention when he said that but whenever he talks spiritual to them Israel just be yep. blank yep. but he said okay so I'm gonna bring some drama on it Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah, that <laughs> is our people right there. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. That's why when you do certain videos like we used to do, we talk about something about destruction. Mm -hmm. Oh. Destruction coming to mm -hmm. Babylon and something like that. I yes. mean, they pile up tons right. of views. Mm -hmm. But yep. we start talking about Christ and believing in him mm -hmm. and giving them understanding. Won't click on it. Yeah, because Israel only understands pain so hard. <laughs> yes. Anything pain related, they up. Yes. Because mm -hmm. what that sound like to them is going to stop my fun. Mm hmm. Yep. All of the pleasures I get to enjoy going to be stopped. Stop. Yeah, that's right. Because remember, did they really care? Uh, was it necessarily, oh, the temple going to be destroyed, meaning I won't be able to come here and you're going to mm -hmm. stand before God and no. Mm -hmm. It's so I come to this den of thieves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can sit here and boast. Right. Because you got to know if they were um, wild by the stones of the temple and the gifts and mm -hmm. all of that that were there. You know what they probably thought of them flooring and robes yeah. <laughs> and big rings and all that them priests had on board. They probably mm -hmm. like them priests we got it going on oh, because that's how Israel is. We are outward people. Yes. We we are wild and wooed by what we see. But God is trying to get us to operate by faith. You know, click your discernment on and look past the outside and look at what's going on around you. That's why Jesus was always observing and showing them. Y'all see a temple. I'm trying to show you what's going on inside the temple. All right. Verse 8. 
And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. Right. And mind you, so he's talking to his soft disciples. So he's telling them that, look, he said, you know, you better be one. You better watch out for deceivers because there's going to be many that come in my name saying that I am Christ. But don't you fall after them. Now, let's see if we had any to come. Let's go to Acts chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. Because he said there were going to be some that come in his name. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. He was some type of Christ, some type of Messiah. Okay. Verse oh. 10. To whom they all gave heed. From the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Only Christ is that. Wow. Not man. Now, didn't it just say that to whom they all gave heed? All gave heed. But this is what Jesus told him here in verse 8. Take heed Take that you mm. be not deceived. Mm. See? So we can see all these things that was happening. This is Christ had spoke to him. Now let's go to Acts chapter 5. Verse 36 and 37. So we had those who were proclaiming themselves to be some type of Christ or Messiah, some Savior during their times of teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay. For before these days rose up Thetis, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who was slain and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. so the same thing with this thetius those who took heed to him they and because he was boasting that he was a leader I'm a, you know follow me guess what 400 and some joined them and they were slain and also those who what obeyed mm -hmm. or had given heed to him believed in him but he was a deceiver were scattered and brought to naught. well you better be careful you got to be when you call yourself following and listening to him mm -hmm. and, and what about verse 37 after this man rose up judas of galilee in the days of the taxing and he drew away much people after him he also perished and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. See, mm -hmm. when Jesus tells you to take heed that you be not deceived, because many was going to come. come. Yeah. That, and we see it and happening see it. just like he told these apostles that it would. Mm -hmm. All right. So let us go back to Luke chapter 21 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. All right. And so Jesus said, when you shall hear wars and commotions or, or commotions or just uprisings, he said, don't be terrified for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Or he said that the end is not coming right away. Right mm -hmm. So now let's take a look at Acts 21, verse 37. And 38, and see if we had any uprisings or commotions. It says, Yeah, next one. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days made us an uproar 
and led us out into the wilderness. Four thousand men that were murderers. And so, mm -hmm. and see, there, there, this uprising, this uproar, mm -hmm. these commotions, commotions yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that happened. Now mm -hmm. let's go to Acts 18, verse 1 through 2. Mm -hmm. Let's look at some more of these commotions and fightings. That's what wars is. Mm -hmm. That's why they, they, they um, were, were killed. Okay, Acts 18, verse 1 through 2. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And see, there's uprises and commotion, cause you know how you well, they say we all got to go. Mm -hmm. We get, what? Mm -hmm. You know, all these commotions and wars that were taking place. So we see that um, Jesus was telling them before time what, what they would be seeing during their time mm -hmm. of apostleship. And sure enough, yep. this is what we're seeing happen. Okay, so Acts chapter 10. Oh, Acts 10. No, Luke 21. Luke 21. Okay, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, uh -oh. <laughs> oh, we're going to call them out verses and chapters that I ain't got. Okay, so Luke chapter 21 and 10. Then said he unto them, Nation shall, uh, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Okay, still wars and stuff that was going to be taking place between different nations and different kingdoms. There's always a vibe for somebody to want to be the superpower. And this is where Rome headed to be that superpower. So there's always going to be other nations that will fight up against you and these ones going to join up with that one to try to overthrow. But just as Jesus said, this for them to be warned of these things that they're going to see during their times, but don't be afraid of it. You got business to take care of, but you're going to see these things take place. Okay, now let's go to verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. All right. So let us go see if we've seen any earthquakes. Let us go to Acts 16, verse 25 and 26, because he said there shall be earthquakes. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Not an earthquake. Yeah. So you don't earthquake. think this earthquake just happened where Paul and Silas were like they look just mm -hmm. a shaking there. Because when an earthquake happened, maybe it happened. Yep. And this says a great earthquake. Mm -hmm. And so that just lets you know that whole city. I mean. Because we see it on TV when mm -hmm. they happen in California, when they happen in Mexico, when they happen in Alaska. It just don't be on yeah, one little spot. Yeah, my mm -hmm. house had an earthquake. Mm -hmm. No, it be the whole mm -hmm. city, just like Christ said, that there would be earthquakes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Think about that. Mm hmm That prison. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because that's how it be. You, you, you ever see those videos when the... They have an earthquake yeah. here, but <laughs> yeah, they go side to side. Everything on the desk fall off, yeah, paint fall. Yes, everything discombobulated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. And see, the Lord just used that great earthquake just, for yeah. his glory for Paul and Silas, but nevertheless, it's an earthquake happened. Mm -hmm. Just like he said. And that Sure, that wasn't the only earthquake that happened, but yeah. I was just pointing out to show that there were earthquakes. Now, let's see it about the famines. Let's go to Acts 11, 27, and verse 28. Because he said it would be um, famines and pestilence. So, Acts 11 and verse 27. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, 
as signified by the Spirit, that there should be great dearth. Famine. Mm -hmm. Great famine. Oh. Was it in just one place or divers places? Th that there should be great dearth throughout all the world. Mm. Just yep. as Jesus had places. said. Yep. Okay. Which came? Which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. And see, this is why you got to believe the most high. Because he always on point. He, he don't just, miss. I mean, just always on target. And so we can't say that he doesn't forewarn his people. You know, because these, these prophets was right here in Jerusalem. Um, and they told him that this... You know, going from the Agabus that there was going to be great famines throughout all the world. And so we know what happens when there's famine. You know you got diseases, which are pestilence, that come, you know, right along with that. Mm. Now let's go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. Because we'd be like, oh, this is the end time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, baby, this doesn't happen. This... Yeah, this happened. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. The future is going to like this. Mm -mm. Romans 8 and 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? So why would he yeah, ask no. that if it wouldn't happen? <laughs> hmm? Why would he ask this question? Because <laughs> it was happening. Yes, because some people would give up on God mm -hmm. because of famines and pestilence and distress and tribulation, all that going on. You know, so that's why he put that just shows you that it was there. It was happening, it was taking place at that time. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Romans 15 and 27. Romans 15 and 27. Is this the one I want to hold on? Let me see. No, it was verse 26. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. For it, for it have pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. Oh, so they was poor. poor. They didn't have. They were in need. And you know this because, see, when, when you have famines and earthquakes and stuff like that, do, can people go out and farm? Do they have a job that they can go to? Resources are very scarce at this time, and this is what you're seeing. But the church takes care of the church. Mm, that's right. The saints that's our job. takes care of the saints. Mm. And this is what Paul was telling them to do. You know, make them contributions. Mm -hmm. you know. Which, by the way... Um, the Christians, as well as the Saturday Israelites, mm. they ain't doing that. Not at all. Mm -mm. But they both, one claim law and the other claim love. Mm -hmm. But both of them together the <laughs> don't do this right here. You sure both don't. Both of y'all ain't following Christ. That's right. And it's a shame that your members have to go to the food mm -hmm. bank to get food. Yep. Yep. Shame when you should be providing you. that. Mm -hmm. Shame on you churches in the Saturday and Sunday. That's right. Camps as well. Shame on you. Yep. So instead of you building up your kingdom of churches, mm -hmm. why not build some apartment building, something like that for your people so they don't have to be evicted mm -hmm. and on the streets and then got to go to the government. But That's you still want tithes and offerings coming in to you so you and your wife and children can mm -hmm. live lavishly. I'm talking Sabbath and Sabbath mm -hmm. on Sunday, too. But want to argue law and Christ with you. Mm -hmm. Sit down. That's right. <laughs> All right. And do what Christ told you to do. <laughs> That's so true. I'm tired of that Sit ignorant crowd. Sit down. Ready mm -hmm. to discuss word with you in debate. Mm -hmm. you no, know, how about you Negroes do what the Lord told you yes. to do and not just talk, 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 mm -hmm. talk. Do, do. do. That's right. Faith and works, mm -hmm. doing what Christ did. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
doing what the old church did, the church of old. He only mm-hmm. looking at how Israel oh, did it. They ain't doing that. Mm-mm. Okay, back oh, to, go back to uh, Luke 21 and 12. Okay. Luke 21 and 12 says, But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you. Oh, did we yes. get one more? No, you're right. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I don't remember reading. Yeah. <laughs> we Christians and Sabbaths. I got you all focus. <laughs> okay, 12. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Okay, so let, let, because he said that they shall lay their hands on you. So let's see who this you was that he was talking to, because it wasn't us. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Matthew chapter 10, verse Mm -hmm. 2 through 4. And definitely these churches today. No. And mm-hmm. laying their hand will take you serious. No. <laughs> you, they ain't ain't no you ain't no hard threat. Hobnobbing with the king. Yeah. You ain't no, no, no threat to this mm-hmm. kingdom. Nope. You a joke. That's right. You ain't making no real moves. You ain't making no real impact. No, you're a participant of Babylon. If anything. Why would I want to lay hands on you? Yeah. Yeah, tell them you keep keep yeah. up the good work for Babylon. So we know this when you future. That's right. <laughs> it ain't going to be you. So late. So Matthew's 10. Let's see who he was talking to. Matthew 10 and 2. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, and and Labias, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. So he was talking to all those, but we know Judas didn't make it. Um, and so this is who he was t- telling them that in um, Luke 21 and 12, that before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to synagogues and prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Now let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 17 and 18, and verse 29. Acts chapter 5, and verse 17. Okay. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. Oh, oh so so it did happen, just as Christ said, mm-hmm. that they was going to lay their hands on them. Mm-hmm. And we know here we got Peter and the other disciples, mm-hmm. the apostles. So they laid their hands on them just like Jesus said. And they would deliver you what? Into prisons. Mm. Okay. Mm. Verse 29. Verse 29 says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So then was the apostles when he was saying that, <laughs> <laughs> that they're going to um, lay their hands on you. Okay. That's right. So it was happening to these apostles, not us. Mm. Okay. So Acts 12 and verse 1 through 3. Acts 12, 1 through 3 says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands. Yup, the king. Yep. Okay, just what he said, that you're going to be brought before kings and rulers mm. for my name's sake. Mm. Okay. To vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Oh, so just like Jesus had told him. Mm-hmm. Before kings, you're going to be going to prison. Mm-hmm. All this stuff happened. Just go to the book of Acts and you can read it all. Mm-hmm. We see it taking place right there. 
Wow. Okay. So let us go back to Luke 21. We're going to do verses 13 and 14. Okay. And it shall uh and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. Yeah, because that's us, boy. We get mm -hmm. in trouble. Oh, this is what I'm going to say. No, no, you ain't got to do that. But mm -hmm. Jesus said all this here persecution, that when they take you uh, before these kings and deliver you up to the synagogues and prison, this this is going to be a chance for you to testify me. But I only go to Acts 14, verse 1 through 3. And we got to remember, too, that yes, Paul was an apostle called by Jesus Christ. Yes. Stop saying that Paul was not. Um, he a, called himself. Yeah. Mm -mm. He was false. Mm -mm. He was chosen. Well, let me tell you, boy, this false Paul, boy, he sure got the same yeah. treatment the rest of the apostles. He sure did. <laughs> they didn't like yes. him very much. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. He but he got to be the worst false uh, apostle I ever see because right. they, they love the false mm -hmm. apostles. And let me just read this in Acts <laughs> nine because they always say that Paul was not chosen. Oops. But you ain't got to even oh. put it up. But Acts nine, it's because remember Saul was breathing out threatens, mm -hmm. doing all that. But then he was blinded on his way on his journey to doing so. But then. Just skip it down to um, verse 11 when it said, And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul, who is also Paul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayed. And then when you skip down to 15, and it says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen <laughs> vessel <laughs> unto me. That's all I wanted to say, because Paul gets a bad rap. He does, yes. But he was an apostle too. And so the same thing that went for the apostles that he originally chose, minus Judas, mm -hmm. Then this a Paul steps in, and he's gonna also suffer these same things. Same things, yep. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, uh, because he said in Luke twenty one that um that it's gonna turn into a testimony for them and to sell it in their mind not to meditate on what they're gonna say. Cause Israel, boy, we oh, get in yeah, trouble. We are saying like a mm -hmm. canary. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go to Acts 14, verse 1 through 3. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. And this is Paul and Barnabas. And so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. Oh, so the Christians need to know Jews <laughs> believe in Christ too. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, because they said no Jews believe. <laughs> yeah. So the church done took over. <laughs> Christian church. <laughs> right. Y'all some darn liars. I can't stand it. <laughs> right. Verse 2. But the unbelieving, the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony Yep, that's that testimony, testimony that he said it would turn into mm -hmm. for them. Okay. Which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Mm. All right. So it did just what he told the um, apostles it would do. Turn to them for a testimony. You ain't got to meditate. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Well, I, mean, I know Paul had that sword so sharp. Woo! <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> All right. Back to Luke 21 and verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which your adversary shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Oh, I love it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So when the Lord gives you a mouth, I mean, he put the words in your mouth. They can't resist. Yes, sir. They can't come against that wisdom. He said, which all, not some of them, but which all your adversaries shall not be able to Man. gainsay 
or resist. Now let's go to Acts chapter 6, verse 8 through 10. Okay. It says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Sicilia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. There they go. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. For it I is. will give you a mouth yes, and wisdom, which your adversaries would not be able to what? Gain, Gain say, say, or, or resist. resist. Yes, sir. You see that? Mm. They couldn't resist that. All right. Let us go back to Luke 21 and verse 16. It says, and you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. Wow. And so in, and he said that you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. And some of you shall, they shall cause and be put to death. And we can even recall when we go back, I think it's in Acts 12 where James was killed. Mm -hmm. yep. And we also had Stephen stoned to death, yep. you know. And remember, even in the beginning of um, Paul's, um, before he was converted to following Christ, himself was putting... Yep. Um, saints in prison and giving his voice against them, mm. you know, um, when they were to be put to death. So we know this was taken because remember all these people out here, they're related. Yeah. You know, yep. kin folks, parents, you know, yep. they did it to Jeremiah in his time. Mm. You know, your own parents setting you up for the kill. Yeah. Which lets you know we're talking about amongst each other. Mm hmm. And, and this whole fight here would be law versus Christ. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what really what was going on. Mm -hmm. And you see it even now, it, just on a small scale, your parents still want to be Christians. And <laughs> you're telling them you're Israelite. Mm -hmm. You know, just that alone. Yep. They come against you for. Mm -hmm. All right. So verse 17. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Oh, my goodness. So he said you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Why? It's for Christ's sake, not for yours. Yep. Christ. You ain't suffering because you're doing evil. Mm -hmm. But for what? Christ's sake. And and what gets his name? His name's sake? His word. When you're putting that word out there. Because his word is above all his name. Yep. But when you start teaching, boy, you're going to be hated about yes. me. Yes. You pointing out, mm. tearing down, and mm. destroying. Oh, they don't like but if that. I, but if you see the opposite, you mm -hmm. just loved mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, something wrong. Something ain't right mm -hmm. with that. That's right. Because guess what? Then that means it's not for his name's sake. It's for your name's that's sake. That's right. And that's why you love. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's right. It's hard for him. His name. For so your churches, your camps. Mm -hmm. Look at my picture. Look at me. Mm -hmm. I'm the deacon. I'm the elder. Yep. I'm the bishop. I'm the pastor. That's right. Mm -hmm. But not these apostles. No. Mm -hmm. We doing this not for us, but for Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's so true. So we got a lot of lying Christians and Israelites. They lie all day long. That's right. All day. Mm-hmm. Yes, right, Zahar. So verse 18. Verse 18. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. Okay. Mm. Now he did tell them that some of them they would cause to be put to put death. To death. See, but he also said for those some that there shall not a hair of your head perish. Why? First of all, it ain't over till God says it's That's over. right. And second of all, you still got work to do for the kingdom. So they going to huff. And they're going to puff, baby, but they ain't going to blow your house down. you still going to be standing. That's so they're right. going to breathe out, threaten us, put you in prison. But God said it ain't over. That's right. He called the shots. He the boss. 
But he just giving them a forewarning of what is going to take place, but what to expect. He said, but to not have your head mm -hmm. going to perish. Mm -hmm. So in other words, what he tell them? Prepare. Prepare. Mm -hmm. You got to fight. Okay, so the last verse. 19, in your possessions, in, in your what? In your possession, okay. <laughs> okay. In your patience, mm -hmm. possess ye your souls. Okay, so in other words, he telling them, but you continue to be patient. You endure this thing. Don't give up because in the end, you will be saved. You possess your soul. Why? Because he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Saved. Yeah. That's what he's telling them. Mm. Yep. So that is all that I have. You that have any excellent that you want to add? Oh no, man. Well, all right, family. With that said, we will say shalom. shalom.